This is an overview of the side menu widget by Unlimited Elements. Let's get started. To get started, drag the side menu into your Elementor page. What this widget does, it's a toggle button that toggles a side menu. The side menu can consist of a title, a search bar, some action items, and a WordPress menu. I'm going to take you over all the settings and show you how you can customize this. So the first setting over here is actually for selecting our menu. I'm going to select my main menu of my website, and now you can see that the menu items have changed to Home, Shop, Contact, and Help. This menu also supports sub-items, so if you have sub-items, it will show them in an accordion fashion and you can actually stylize every sub item the way that you want and also stylize these collapsing and expanding arrows. The next setting is for depth. If you don't want to show the sub items, you can change the depth to one and then it will show only the parent items without expanding and collapsing the sub items. The next part is for showing or turning on or off the close button over here we will choose this when we turn off our overlay and use our toggle button as for on and off for the side menu i will show that later on next part is for showing the search so let's turn off the search and turn on our menu and now you can see there isn't any search bar action buttons we can also turn off these call to action buttons and we can edit them inside of items. So let's turn on items. What we can do here is we can delete items, we can duplicate items, we can add new items, and we can reorder items. Of course, we can also edit items. So for example, if I want to change the phone to a Facebook, let's select a different icon, and inside of link, you can paste your Facebook link over here. Now when I open the menu, the first item will be a Facebook action link. Let's jump back into general. And the next thing we can do over here is actually snap our menu to the right side instead of the left. So right now it's being snapped to the right side. And our close button is also on the right. Later on, I'll always show you how you can move it to the left. If we want to use our menu toggle as a toggle button for turning on and off we will need to turn off the overlay so over here we have an option turn off the overlay and now this button can be used for turning on and off our menu that's pretty awesome next part is actually for the placeholder of the search so let's turn the search back on so we can see it and you can change the text that appears over here to any text you want for example, changes to your language or something like that. We have an option also to add a title. So let's turn on a title for our menu, which is on top over here. And you can style this later on inside of the style tab. Of course, you can change the text over here. Inside of the icons, we can change the icon for the toggle icon, for our search icon over here, and for the close button, which right now is on the right side of our menu, so we don't see it. So Let's jump into style and we're going to turn that back on. So menu width, we can change the width of our menu. For example, I'll make it 500 instead of 300 and now it's much wider. This is a responsive setting and you can determine if your menu is going to be in pixels or in percentage. Menu background, so you can add a background image, change the background color and even choose a gradient color if that suits your design. Inside of toggle icon, it's to style this icon over here. We can align our icon however we want. For example, if I want to align it to the end, it will snap back over here. We can align it to the center, for example, and it will be attached to the center. Of course, you can also position this using advanced and doing a fixed position or something like that. Next part, let's just snap it back to the flex start and we can make our toggle bigger we can make the inner icon bigger we can make the radius rounded if we want to 
we can change the background colors. Let's change the background, for example, to black and the icon to white. And maybe let's add a border. Maybe our border will be five pixels wide and I'll make it a gray color. Awesome. So you get the point. You can really customize almost any part of the design over here. I'm going to minimize this and jump into title. So the title is for the top part over here. Of course, if you want to change the styling, you do need to make sure that it's turned on first. So let's just make the title a different color. And that's awesome. Next part is for, let's just add a, also a bigger border, bottom border over here. So I'm unlinking and adding a five pixel border just so you can see how that looks and get the idea of how you can change this. You can even change the alignment just for the title over here. So just aligned it to the center and let's go to the close button. Now, right now the close button is on the right side. So to move it to the left side, I'm just going to change the close button alignment from right to left and it will jump to the left side, which is really, really awesome. Take in mind that in some cases, we don't want the close button to be outside. We want it to be inside. So to do that, we're going to give it a positive value instead of a negative value. That was minus 50 and I changed that to plus 30 or maybe let's do even plus 20, which I think makes more sense. And over here we have the distance from the top. So you can play around with this and place it exactly where you need. Of course, this is a responsive setting. So you can change that depending on the responsive settings of your website. Of course, we have all the colors and radius and size like we had before, exactly like we had in the toggle. Menu items, this is really important. This is to stylize the menu items over here. So actually we can decrease the padding to make them thinner. We can change the background color if we want to. Right now it's with some opacity and you can add a hover background color and you can actually change everything. I mean, we did take care of adding all the settings that you might need. You can space between the items. You can add a border right now. By default, there's a subtle border underneath of the items and you can stylize the sub items and sub sub items separately. So if you want them with a different typography or different background colors, you can do that as well. Over here is the search styling. So for example, if I want, I can make my search rounded, which looks pretty awesome. I can change its background color, its typography and everything I might need to change, even though the defaults are looking really, really good. But you know, if you want to customize this to your website design or your designer has some idea about this, you can change that search button. So we can change the button over here. Let's uh, make an example. So let's change the background color of our button, let's say to something grayish and the icon colors to white. And of course you have hover colors for that as well. Action buttons is for these buttons over here. So actually you can change the padding. Let's decrease the padding just so you can see how that looks. And uh, you can change the icon size. If you want to make the icons bigger over here, you can change the icon spacing. That's the space between the icon and the text. And of course, typography, if you want to make the text bigger or different font family, you can do that as well. The last part over here is for the overlay. So right now our overlay is off. Let's turn it back on over here. And this is actually the background color over here. So let's just give a quick example of changing this from, a, let's say, a black color to some different color. So that's how you can change that and play around with it to suit your needs. And that's about it, guys. So I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. This is a super powerful widget that we made especially for you. And I'm going to see you in the next video.